Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to an interview with Remy Nodé. Remy is the CEO of Exerp. Exerp are a leading software provider to the fitness and wellness industry. They specialize on large software solutions and technology platforms for the biggest operators across our ecosystem. Their Rolodex is something to be envious of. And in this interview, myself and Remy will talk all things technology, the challenges that operators are currently going through, and where he sees the future of technology as it evolves in this marketplace. Enjoy a great conversation. Remy, thanks very much for joining us here today. Um, it's been a strange last 12 months, but at last we're starting to see green shoots of recovery open up. You work with some of the largest fitness and wellness operators across the world. Their businesses are reopening, which is great to see. Uh, long may that continue on an upward trend. Of course, looking over all these businesses, you must start to notice some trends appearing across. What are you seeing in terms of business trends as your clients start to reopen their facilities? Yeah, I think we what we see is really uh, for all the uh, many people looking forward to come back and, and get some social interactions. You know, we've been all disconnected um, in our workplaces, uh, in uh, disconnected from our usual activities, but I think fitness members have been also disconnected from a place of social socializations and what we've seen is people are coming back quite rapidly um, <clears throat> maybe you know part of the members are still a little bit reluctant afraid of uh, you know of the, the current pandemic uh, of, afraid of corona but I think the need for getting back to some kind of normal norm, normality the social connections having going back to the gym I think are, are very important and this is what we see, the, the, like the over, overwhelming trend is this need for getting back to social interactions and, and back to your communities if you're training or, or, if, or getting back to work as well uh, for our colleagues. Now, no doubt your clients will have challenges that emerge, often some unknown, um, but they obviously are coming through. What are they asking you for now, Remy? I mean, you're obviously a close partner to them in so many different aspects of their business, but what kind of challenges are they now asking you to help them overcome? Yeah, so <clears throat> I think many of our clients are, you know, still not entirely done with, <laughs> with the closing. So we still see an enormous amount of uh, back office work. Um, we, we have, you know, many of our clients are reopened partially, but some are still entirely closed. Uh, and, and there's quite a few places where you're reopening and reclosing, you know, it's very local lockdowns. So we opening, closing fac facilities, uh, adjusting buildings on a daily basis almost, uh, based on you know uh, 
very very short notice from uh, from authorities. So that's I think probably the the biggest thing that is going on still and. And probably for the coming months uh, will still go on. And we, we, you know, we spend <laughs> unfortunately six or six months or a year of our lives, you know, opening and closing clubs, adjusting buildings, uh, and especially being a massive undertaking and really a pretty big pain for 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 our clients, especially when they were, you know, following most of the employees and <clears throat> not always having so many people to 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 do those things. So we we've been helping them uh, with that quite a lot. Um, other than that, I think there's a lot of ideas going uh, bubbling up. Uh, last year has been a year of uh, conservative, quite conservative, right? For for operators trying to preserve cash. Now that the light is uh, visible at the end of the tunnel, um, everyone wants to to move uh, forward in all sorts of directions. So um, there's a lot of IDs around, uh, I would say, uh, and and probably not enough time. You know, more IDs than uh, than the hands to realize them. Um, but but it's good to you know to see this uh, to see IDs coming to the surface. Yeah. Now there's a lot of uncertainty, like you say, opening and closing uh, presents a large number of challenges. You've also had these opportunistic trends coming through hybridization, digital fitness and the likes coming through. It really is a kind of fastly changing landscape for the operator now. Speaking about it from a software industry and a technology industry standpoint, Remy, with these operators evolving so quickly, the market evolving so quickly, how does the technology industry evolve with them? What do you think is going to happen next when it comes to the fitness software market? Yeah, I mean, if I look at what happened in the past 12 months, we have been in contact with a number of operators that have been in, in, in a significant amount of pain and realized that in order to build that digital experience, in order to, to build all those digital services, you need to have a strong, very robust foundation. Uh, and, and that's... Uh, that, of course, this is what you, you, we, we specialize on, but it's really important to understand that if you have, if you don't have this solid foundation, whatever you're going to build on top is going to be, you know, very difficult to build, and and you know you're going to spend a lot of energy trying to build that digital member experience, those digital services, but you can't compensate building up there if your foundation is not solid. So. We, we've seen a number of operators going back to the fundamentals and saying, well, we need a system which is rock solid that has all the key elements of, of what we need, you know, from the billing to the booking, access control, and, and all those things in place. And then we can build on top of that, you know, those, uh, those digital experiences. So that's what we've seen, you know, go back, focus to the core, focus to the... The, the, the essential uh, and, and less, less uh, you know, less fancy, you know, m- maybe less fancy, more f- less fluffy, I would yeah. say. Focus, focus on what's really essential. Um, Let's look at today's ecosystem, Remy. It seems to be getting bigger and bigger and bigger. There are large tech you know, companies coming in. There's a huge number of fitness apps and wearables, et cetera. How does Exert fit into that ecosystem? And again, maybe to your, the point you just raised, there seems to be, you know, maybe this kind of unknown around the ideal tech stack that any company should have. I mean, what are your thoughts around both the, the wider ecosystem integrations and of course, tech stacks of tomorrow? <clears throat> yeah. So we're, you know, what we, we help our clients choose their own, you know, choose their, make their own, differentiate their, differentiate their own businesses and we help them with whatever, uh, you know, whatever apps they chosen or whatever services they want to integrate. Uh, and, and that's probably one of the, you know, the key differences that we have compared to ha- being fortunate to work with some of the largest operators. You know, they, they have uh, resources to, to invest into differentiating themselves. And that also m- means that we, 
need to have a little bit different perspective because we're going to work hand in hand with our class rather than saying, well, this is here, here's an integration uh, for you to use and for everyone to do the same. We're looking at very much, you know, working in, in partnership with our clients and, and, and seeing what they want to do and, and doing the, you know, whatever we can to, to, to help them. Uh, so we're navigating in, you know, with very many different things and, and seeing different projects with different operators. So that, that means it's, uh, it's quite interesting for us, I think. Uh, um, yeah. What are your thoughts in terms of, I mean, obviously you've seen the number of integrations, you know, rise exponentially over the past couple of years, Remy, from somebody perhaps wanting to plug into one system, now they have to plug into 10. Do you think there's going to be a plateau point with some, maybe in the future where, you know, you're only going to pick perhaps the two or three best partners for a company to, to choose into? I mean, how do you see that kind of playing out? Yeah, so... You know, those integrations, you have to distinguish between the, you know, what's marketed really and, and the reality of the integrations. And, and very often, and this is not just about the fitness industry, I think it's all about, it's about the, the software service industry. You know, all companies, markets, you know, all we've integrated with everything and everyone else. And really, when you dig a scratch behind the surface, the integration is, is very limited and you can't really do anything about it, uh, you know, with it. It's not necessarily too, too useful. And I think the fitness industry is no exception. If you want to integrate really truly to, to services quite deeply, it's, it requires a tremendous amount of work. Um, and that's quite often not the case because those integrations are there for marketing purposes, right? So I think you have to, to be conscious and, and scratch really behind the surface of those what those integration means. Um, of course, the, the large operators have you know, more means to do proper deep integrations or sometimes you establish partnerships and, and except we've established partnerships with function, of course, with technology, with my wellness cloud. Uh, we have a partnership with Wexa where we've, worked you know trying to make deep integrations but of course it's it's very difficult to do that with you know with all uh, all those uh, new products and services around so sometimes you know operators if they see something then they can uh, they can invest and we can help them uh, but we yeah th this is how we start you know our partnerships usually it's uh, one of our clients bringing us together uh, get to work with, with another company and then if we like those people if we're like-minded and we like that product then we we're going to expand the the relationship and, and work together independently of the client now you work with some of the world's largest uh, operators here remy perhaps for some of them will be maybe more smaller to mid-cap companies those that have got aggressive growth plans perhaps they are using maybe some of these more SaaS driven models you know simple easy fast but as they scale up into like a multinational company, they require the complexity, they require the sophistication. Is that something you find when you're talking to some new clients that perhaps have made that kind of step change in growth where their systems before are not necessarily the systems they want in the future? You know, when our clients in their, in their growth, they, uh, they quite often reach a, some kind of plateau with their existing suppliers and it's quite difficult for a supplier to supply, you know, all the small uh, operators and, and the big ones at the same time. And, and the needs are quite different. Uh, and, you know, it's not that one is better than the other. It's just very different set of needs. The large operators, a lot of, you know, a lot of IT staff, and they can leverage uh, flexibility. They can leverage complexity. They want to do things on their own. If you're a smaller operator, you have to do with what you have. And you, if your software is too complicated to handle, you know, you're not going to be able to leverage it. So it's very different needs. Um, <clears throat> the big operators don't want to be driving, you know, the, the innovation in the software, in their software supplier all by themselves as well. As well. If, you if you're, you know, a major player in your market and you have one operate, you know, one large operator in, in this market and, and uh, 
and one supplier, dominant supplier. You know, there's many European countries like that. Then you're driving all innovation and all the small ones uh, are benefiting from all the resources you're pouring into, into uh, moving forward. So what we offer is we basically have all, uh, not all, but many large operators uh, from different markets that don't compete with each other and that can, you know, contribute to, to one bigger platform. So we think that's, that's a compelling offer for, for, you know, for the clients that we have. Let's look at the offer. Of course, no doubt you've got a, a development plan sitting on your table, Remy. What's going to come up in the next 12 to 24 to 36 months? Perhaps COVID has changed that slightly. What is coming up in terms of new features, new iterations uh, for Exerp in the future? So I think on, on one end, we're we are looking to, towards new markets. So we, you know, we're expand, expanding clients uh, and it's not, you know, we, we call it localizations. It's not really features, but, you know, we think there's uh, interesting way, interesting things, uh, things going on in the bil- Middle East. Um, so that's, we think is quite exciting. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we also, in terms of features, we, you know, dig- more digitalization uh, and that can be, you know, we've supported, for example, digital uh, signature of contracts for a long time. But, uh, you know, sign pads, for example, has been the key, uh, you know, one key elements of the digital signature of contracts. This is going, uh, this is going online, pure online. We, we you know, the traditional uh, reception, reception setup with a point of sale and, and th- those things are getting, getting more dematerialized. Maybe in order to take a payment, you'll send, you know, links, uh, links so the payments can be done on the, on the member's uh, mobile phone or using apps and various things uh, like that. So, you know, getting rid of more of hardware, uh, get, getting rid of things that you can touch, you know, terminals and things like that. I think this is a pretty strong trend. And we're doing this in, in as much a flexible way as possible for our clients because we, you know, we're not going to choose one payment solution uh, for all our clients. We're going to make, make it so we can or our clients can integrate with the you know, payment, new payment solution uh, or the new contract, digital contract solution that of their own choosing. Uh, and it can be quite different you know, from country to country, from continent to continent. Uh, but we're trying to, you know, be ready as much as possible for, for those kind of changes. Uh, good. Well, look, it's good to see you expanding further internationally, Remy. I know the team in Asia Pacific are doing a great job and then getting some good traction in there. So look forward to seeing uh, where you end up in the Middle East as well. That's exciting times. Let's point the spotlight back at you for the closing question, Remy. I mean, you are a CEO, you are a leader. It's been a very challenging time for everybody, but of course, the top of the mountain, it's it's difficult for those to try and make sure the team is energized, the business is going in the right direction, that everything is moving. What lessons, uh, whether it's business and or life, has the last 12 months taught you? What, what have you taken away from this positively? Yeah, I think the most important for me has been to realize that, well, all the digital, uh, you know, digital technologies, everything can be done online from anywhere, but uh, it doesn't replace human connection and, you know, sitting face-to-face in a meeting, uh, having conversations, you know, tough conversations or not necessarily tough, let's say, uh, you know, not uh, conversations that uh, where you need to agree on something, you need to innovate, you need to, uh, yeah, to, to find new ideas. Those conversations are so much more productive when you're sitting in the same room. I mean, it, it's... It's such a huge difference, and and I think we we thought we it's all working very well, you know, and it it looks like it's uh, it's working very well, all uh, being uh, remote. But when you come back to the office, then you suddenly have the best day, the best workday in 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 a, in a month, 
And then you realize, well, it was kind of working, but only half working. And I think this is really the most important lesson. It's like the human part is so important and you can't have it through a screen. Unfortunately, it's, it's just some an important part of it goes away. So we're really happy to have reopened our offices. And I think we've also been distant from our clients. Uh, and we used to, you know, I used to travel quite a lot uh, and haven't traveled for business in a year. Now I start to miss it, you know, for the first three months, I was thinking this is brilliant. I don't want to set foot in the plane again, ever again, but <clears throat> I actually miss, you know, I want to fly to see our clients in Canada, in the US. I want to go to Australia. Unfortunately, I don't think we're welcome there for quite some time, but um, <clears throat> Definitely, yes. I want to go and meet our clients and we, our staff is the same. We, you know, we really want to, to meet again with people face to face. And that's, that's the lesson learned, I think. I think. That's a good lesson, Remy. I think people, there's a pent up demand for fitness and wellness. There's a pent up demand to travel. And I think there's always been a pent up demand to connect as, much, as well as you can. Uh, Remy, thanks so much for a great conversation. I um, look forward to hearing more excerpt uh, developments coming out in the next few weeks and months. And we're wishing you and your team all the success for the rest of the year. Thank you. It was uh, a pleasure. And I'm looking forward to uh, come and visit you also in Singapore.